fun jam session for us. <laughs> and one thing that we do, while that was written for these instruments, uh, we have taken pieces that we have created arrangements of, such as the Latin set that we're going to play, and what's really fun in rehearsal, we just start playing sometimes it's a piece Charlie and I have been playing for a long time, and Gabe will pick some of his um, instruments and try things with them. And he's going to tell you a little bit about that process. But first, I just wanted to say that this concert is dedicated to the memory of a good friend of mine who passed away this past year, Helen Kalimahos Hurry, a resident of Ocean Grove. And so we're thinking about her and missing her tonight because I love to see her at all my other concerts here. So. And her son Andrew is here, a great friend too. Thank you. Um, Gabe, you want to come? Good evening, everybody. It's a real pleasure for us to be here, having a lot of fun. We could tell that as we were playing. Um, I'm going to just quickly talk a little bit about what I do in this group, because um, as Mimi said, it is a very interesting process taking music for... I mean, some of the stuff that we're playing doesn't even use a piano, so to play with flute and piano in music that's kind of foreign to me um, is always a great challenge. And Mimi and I have been working a lot uh, developing some repertoire that can incorporate percussion really well without overpowering the flute or being too busy or too weird. So um, instead of talking about every instrument that I have, I'm going to probably answer the number one question that might be on your minds regarding my setup, which is, what is that instrument that I was sitting on and playing? Raise your hand if that was your question. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's the, I, I've, I've had to answer this question a lot. Hold on, let me grab it. This instrument, um, comes pretty, well, it's like a manufactured top of the line version of what is essentially a fruit crate. And, uh, <laughs> um, and this instrument was uh, mainly found to be played down in Peru, Peru. Um, and what happened was like about 40 years ago, or maybe, maybe a little under 40 years ago, the great flamenco guitar player uh, Paco de Lucia discovered this instrument and really popularized it around the world because I don't think many people knew about it before. It's called a cajon, which means box. Pronunciation good, Mimi? Mimi speaks Spanish, so. It means box. It's essentially a box drum. Cajon. Not to be confused with any other Spanish words that are not so appropriate. <laughs> different word. Different word. And uh, what you see is basically what you get. Big wooden box, but in the back, there's actually a hole so that the box can resonate, and you probably can't see from where you are, but there are three metal wires that are rattling against the front side of the box, so. That broken sound that sounds like two things are clacking, it's because there's these wires in here rubbing against the box, and it's kind of similar to a snare drum, which also has wires rubbing under it. So, this is a very, uh, very useful drum, because unlike everything else I play, I can carry this with me wherever I go without <laughs> killing myself. So um, I like to use it a lot with this group and, and you can see it played in flamenco music and it's very popular nowadays. So anyway, we're going to get back to some playing. Hope you enjoy it. And we're going to play three Brazilian choros. This is a genre which emerged at the end of the 19th century in Brazil, especially in the cities, for example, Rio de Janeiro. And it would be for a band of usually flute, sometimes saxophone, but mostly flute as the melody instrument, plus different percussion and guitars and other instruments. And we've been developing our arrangements for our group. Um, the first one we're going to play is Doshi de Coco, which means coconut candy, by the composer Jacob do Bandolim. His instrument was mandolin, so that's how he got his, his name. And then a waltz, Tininha, by the great show performer, flutist, and composer, Pichinginha. And then the last one is called Aeroporto do Galhau, and this is the name of the airport in Rio de Janeiro. The composer, Altamiro Cariu, was sitting in the airport and heard over the loudspeaker four tones and wrote his choro based on those notes, so I think you'll hear them when we get there.
Sigue is a French composer, and his sonatine for flute and piano is one of the staples of our repertoire. Uh, my repertoire is a flutist. A lot of our music for flute comes from France in the late 19th through 20th centuries, and a lot of it was centered at the Paris Conservatory, where major flute professors and composers created a whole body of wonderful pieces um, for me, no, for, for <laughs> flutists today. <laughs> um, there was a yearly competition, there still is, um, and for contest pieces is, is often how composers would, would write for the flute. So Henri Dutilleux's piece, um, Sonatine, was uh, a morceau de concours, or a contest piece at the Paris Conservatory in 1943.
Jewish music, uh, traditional Jewish music, the first two songs are Yiddish folk songs, often Pripachik, a lullaby, and Tumba Lalaika, which is a very popular dance-like song. And then we are going to perform um, a work from the Sephardic tradition, the Jews of medieval Spain who spread out throughout the Mediterranean world. And this is the song, Cuando el Rey Nimrod, um, tells about a king, King Nimrod, and the song itself dates back to the medieval period. And we might ask for your help in that song too.
quite a diverse program, as you can see. Uh, something for everyone. Um, next work is an arrangement we've done from a, a piano piece, or a piece by Jelly Roll Morton. Jelly Roll Morton was born in New Orleans, 1890, of the name, not Jelly Roll, but Ferdinand Joseph Lamont, a Creole, one of the great early jazz musicians from New Orleans, later Chicago, New York, had a great career as a solo pianist, and his band, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, one of the great early bands from New Orleans. So we need a, a name. We need to be the Red Hot something or other. So if you can come up with something, uh, you can let us know. Anyway, the piece we're doing for you is called The Pearls. And um, the Pearls really, in a way, references the piano keyboard, the idea of the pearly touch. But it's a great example of Jelly Roll Morton's great jazz style.
last piece on our program is from, again, an arrangement of a piano piece by William Bolcom. Uh, William Bolcom in the late 1960s became very interested in ragtime and wrote a lot of wonderful ragtime pieces. Um, he's a, a still living American composer. Um, he wrote a set of four rags and they are basically rags about the the creation story from Genesis. And this particular one is the serpent's kiss. Very programmatic about the serpent and Eve. And I think you can follow the musical story quite well. It's quite an amazing piece. And I think we've come up with an interesting version.